been a while since I headed to the surface of Talon 4 and played Metroid Prime. <clears throat> I was not in the best headspace at the time. But with Metroid Prime 4 on the horizon and quite a few YouTubers I really like actually playing Metroid Prime Remastered, it is time to go back to Talon 4 and finish what I started. Red 2, standing by, all four lit and in the green. Welcome to Metroid Prime Remastered. It looks beautiful, that's one of the first things I want to say about this, it looks beautiful. I've beaten the game on hard mode, I've got absolutely everything, and I will show that off in due course. It was a right royal pain in the keister. Uh, hang on, I'll let... Uh, can I actually erase the fire? How do I erase the f uh, Minus, that's... It. That one was almost done, but I was missing one missile and wasn't prepared to look through the whole lot. Anyway, it does look absolutely beautiful. Like, the original holds up fantastically. This goes above and beyond. And it's not sort of a controversial choice like all the extra bloom and whatever they added to Wind Waker HD, which I think in some senses does take away from it a bit. The updated graphics do look great, but there's a certain charm to the GameCube that I really like. This, on the other hand, just looks amazing all the way through. Hard mode is a right royal pain in the butt, though, because I think you take a bit more damage and you do less damage. It's more of a chore sometimes than anything else. If you're good at the game, you'll get through it. It's just a slog. There are shortcuts you can take. Anyway, we'll play on normal because I'm not prepared to go through hard mode. That was tedious as all get out, as I said. Let's get into it. This was phenomenal to see back in 2002. I think it was 2002 anyway. Like, we had no idea what was going to happen. In At least people in the Metroid community did. Super had been phenomenal. But there was no follow-up on the N64. Samus's only Nintendo 64 appearance was Super Smash Brothers. Nobody knew how they were going to top Super Metroid, still held up as one of the best games of all time. Development for this was hell. The developer's work had to be restarted because Shigeru Miyamoto wanted them to do first person instead of third person. Nobody was certain about this, and then they played it. Whatever they did, Super, Super Metroid was equaled in a sense with this. Its legacy was carried on brilliantly by Metroid Prime and Metroid Fusion, which I absolutely love and I've done twice because I wanted to redo it. So, we've got our buttons for the scan visor, which is vital because it will give us important information, so I'll be blathering on a bit about what we find. So, 
So, the L button lets you lets you lock onto targets. Shoot with the A button, jump with the B button. So I use the GameCube style controls because that's what I'm used to. Everybody these days tends to use dual dual stick setups. But there's the thing, I've never played a lot of I've never really played dual dual stick shooters and it gets a bit confusing for me. Like it's one of the reasons I was no good at Splatoon. I'm used to this sort of control because I grew up with Goldeneye. So I'll be playing like this and every approach is valid. We've got a thing floating. Whatever it is, it's not friendly. It's also very dead. Yuck. Well, what do I expect? I shot something at point blank range. It's like a moth on a windshield. Do you reckon Samus has got windscreen wipers? Like, that'd have to be pretty handy. You'd need something to clear the visor of all the alien guns you wind up getting on you. Like, it'd be pretty cool. Just, like, a little windscreen wiper or some sort of gadget that helps clear her vision. But you step in here, and how good does this look? Like, it's very clear something is not right. But, jeez, it looks good. We can find some things to scan. And now if I get it right. Yep, you will find several space pirates, which are dead. Death caused by a severing of the spinal cord. Ah, here we go. The first creature entry. Parasite, interstellar vermin. They travel in swarms. Indigenous to Talon 4, a single parasite is harmless to larger life forms. However, they tend to travel in large groups, swarming over potential prey. Such swarms can be dangerous. I have to see if I can get like a Pokedex entry or something like that. So you can splat that and we can go through this guy's pockets for change. Oh, Yeah, that's not nice. He's been... Yeah, impaled by the legs of this. Unknown. Info, high levels of radiation detected. That, whatever it is, it's big. It's interesting foreshadowing. Oh, more parasites. But we can't... Oh! Analysis shows incredibly large muscle structures surrounding the jaw area. Fluid sacs containing acid are also detected. Like, just... Again, just look at the details! Like, you're going through in something that almost feels like a precursor to dead space. And you've got such stunning visuals. Like, the pixel art of Super Metroid is very impressive. Now, I believe that one down there is still alive. Yep, weak life signs detected. Imprints of large bite marks can be seen on the exoskeleton. So, we'll put a few bullets into him and put him out of his misery. I suppose it's better than letting him just sort of slowly die. But yeah, honestly, this... It still looks stunning and you're just sort of wondering what on earth is going on. Because keep in mind, at this, this time, the space pirates are at the height of their powers. You've wiped out their operation on Zebus, but they're recovering efficiently. At least their first one, because Metroid Prime takes place after the original, or Zero Mission, but before Metroid 2. So we get our map station. Walk into map station holograms to download a map of the area you're in. So, basically we use our gun like we did in Super. We have the map for this particular area. So, you can uh, rotate the control stick, you can use L and R to zoom in or out, and you'll be able to see how everything connects as well. There is no way to trace pickups when we get to that, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. But if you want to pay attention, you can take time and scan various bits of lore. Talon foreground zero area secure, crater radiation readings normal, okay. Frigate exterior hull stable and fully functional. Well, that's fortunate. We don't want to get sucked out into space. 
Parasitic infestation has been detected in the ventilation systems of decks Gamma and Beta. Two parasite queen specimens have become volatile on deck Beta. All security personnel should report to the biotech research area. So this is all optional. But if you do spend some time reading, you will find out a lot of information about what the pirates are doing. And like I said, the fact that whatever has gone wrong here prompted them to send out a distress signal is actually kind of terrifying. The space pirates are usually the ones invoking the distress signals and it gets even nastier when you'll see what what they have on board. So we can sneak through small spaces without more fall. Nobody really knows how it works. It's never quite been explained. We've got a few... Oh. Well, he's still alive. No, they're not alive anymore. Don't forget to scan your pickups as well. The, your research entry adds in further depth to the logbook. This is a small energy unit. Replenishes 10 units of energy. So, if you use missiles for things, you'll also see pickups for those. And something has broken out. Like, already you're just wondering, gee, what on earth is going on? We know that two Parasite Queen specimens have escaped. One of them was nearby, so... Fire missiles with X, I need my scan visor. Got the door. Okay, a new creature's entry. In as much as it is a creature. Mechanism. Auto turret. Use missiles to break out a casing. So, those can be destroyed by your charge beam, but missiles are effective too. New research entry. Missile ammunition. Re resupplies missile launcher with three rounds of ammo. No... Back in the old days, you only had two. Now, before we go any further, if you're playing through this for the first time, are there any pirates stumbling around? Take care of that. Oh yeah, and something... Nope, just that. So, if you are going for 100% completion, pay attention. Because there is one scan entry for your for your logbook that you can only get here. Well, apart from the boss. Pirate data. This is an important part of lore, so make sure you get it all. So, this has been downloaded to our logbook. In, it's encrypted data, but apparently our suit possesses the ability to decode it. Samus is actually really good at hacking. Zebus has fallen. All ground personnel are presumed dead. Either killed by the hunter clad in metal or in the subsequent destruction of the underground facilities. The words time bomb set get out fast have something to do with it. Our research frigates Orpheon, Syriacus and Vol Paragon were in orbit at zero hour and managed to retreat. Frigate Orpheon is now docked at Vortex Outpost. Orpheon's cargo appears to have a 100% survival rate. Metroids are healthy but on restricted feeding schedules due to uncertain supply status. We are ready to begin research on the Metroids and other promising life forms. Security status remains at Code Blue. No signs of pursuit from the Hunter. Code Blue wouldn't be very good if you're in a hospital, to the best of my knowledge. Ah, oh, radio that. So sometimes you'll see those near turrets that will allow you to deactivate them. Now, this is a very, very big parasite. That's really big. Nothing in there. A plasmite native. It's very big. Specimen solitary holding one phase on level unknown status xenotropic life form unstable. Use, use caution. That is a side hopper which appears on planet Zebus. And it's not happy at being locked up. However, we do not encounter side hoppers as enemies in this game. 
you would encounter Des Gigas in other M. It's worth noting you can't get the proper scan data for Space Pirates just yet. You'll just get little bits of information about their injuries. Well, that got rid of him. And now we have a stronger one. And you can blast enemies with missiles. So they'll generally just sort of die fairly quickly and go flying. So something's been going wrong. The pirates are definitely in a lot of trouble. Oh, you're not friendly. Is that... No, just the regular one. The music is amazing at setting the atmosphere. The Metroid series has always had really, re generally had really, really good music. Opinion is a bit divided on Dread's soundtrack, but I do like a lot of it. I'm especially fond for the themes uh, located in Berenia. And there we go. Damn it, I was trying to scan the corpse and didn't get to. Door lock enabled. Please insert metallic sphere to... So, do the pirates actually have... Removal of internal organs? Ew, Not nice. So, do the pirates actually have keys that are metal spheres? Because it kind of makes you wonder. They can't use the morph ball. Why do they have locks on their own ships, designed so that Samus can open them, but they can't. There's got to be some sort of logic to this. So we'll take care of them. So, charge beam can be used to draw in pickups. Very handy to remember that. Nope, we just got the small ones for now. You're going to be able to gather lots of uh, information about dead pirates. It just sort of adds to the chaos. And it just makes you think, what happened here? We know how dangerous the space pirates can be, so what did this to them? Acid burns to the face. So, save station, make sure to scan this. New research entry, save station, step into these stations to save your game and fully restore your energy. Yes, you actually get a full heal at these. Which was not the case in Metroid 2 and Super Metroid, but you did have energy recharge stations along the way. Essentially, they combined the two into one. There are still missile stations and map stations. Uh, focus on this, please. There we go. So, once again, we put in a ball. The door is going to open, and we are through to the reactor core, which means danger. It looks peaceful enough. You know that big dead thing we saw earlier? Here's a live version. This is the Parasite Queen, which appeared in the background of the Frigate Orpheon, and it looks even uglier in HD. Get your scan visor out, because this is the only opportunity you have, fairly obviously, to scan it. Same deal with bosses. A new creature's entry has been downloaded to the logbook. Morphology, Parasite Queen. Parasite female, genetically enhanced by unknown means. A weak spot has been detected in this creature's mouth. Use your auto-targeting to acquire this new target. Scans indicate the presence of a potent mutagen, origins unknown. The creature exhibits the ability to fire weapon-grade blasts of energy from its mouth, a trait not present in the standard parasite genome. It appears the pirates have begun a bioengineering program with considerable results. So keep locked on. Put charge beams into its mouth. Use B to move from side to side, strafing around your opponent and dodging it and dodging their attacks. Of course, it 
it's fairly easy to dodge the attacks of the Parasite Queen. And it doesn't do a huge amount of damage. So we'll put a missile into it and finish it off. It's a good tutorial boss and it fell right into the reactor core. Just great. It's not happy with that. And that... That is not a good thing. Well... We wind up starting with an escape sequence. That feels like a Metroid moment. We need to run in the direction of a way and get out of the frigate. Alright, take the lift up. And then we run. We run our backsides off. It seems like everywhere Samus gets involved with seems to blow up. There was an interesting e exception, though. Oh yeah, another parasite specimen decides to escape, but things blow up and... This creature's deceased creature's incubation period was prematurely terminated. Its shell is not yet fully hard. Yeah, that would have been another parasite queen. They're messing around with things. They are continuing to goof around with things they don't understand. Or at least this is where they started goofing around with things they don't understand. This is kind of a running theme with the space pirates that they just keep messing with things they really shouldn't. Because they tend to spend a lot of time messing around trying to control Metroids. And as the series went on, it kind of proved that, yeah, they're idiots. There is a reason... The science team has vapor for brains phrases fairly mimetic, but that one's from Metroid Prime 2. So we gotta keep sprinting through the ventilation shafts, the parasite infested ventilation shafts. And then maybe we will get out of here. So far so good. Something's blown up for us. We keep sneaking through here. You can at least see other parts of the tracks you had to make in order to get here. And this, this surprises us with turrets. Take them out and move on. Be very careful because there's a huge piston coming through somewhere. Alright, we pretty much just have to face tank the pirates. Not, not the pirates, the parasites. Probably best to not face tank the pirates because that will end in disaster. They are a bit stronger than the basic parasites. And our armor helps. Yep, this one. I don't think that's an instant kill, but then again, I've never been hit by it and I don't want to find out. Big... Big, hard, hammery things are best not interacted with. So, let's get through here. Samus looks around and... Guess who? That's right, it's Ridley. And it kind of adds a hor another horrifying element to this whole sequence. The space pirates had Ridley present, and they still saw fit to send out a distress beak. That's how and that's how frightened they were by their experiments going wrong. Get close, scan this. And, as soon as we do, there is the mandatory Metroid depowering moment. That has got to be hard on the back. Don't worry, I feel that, Samus. So, we have lost. We've lost our missile launcher. We've lost the Morph Ball, we've lost the Morph Ball bombs, we've lost the grappling hook, but most of all, we have lost the big shoulders. Which is sad. 
Interestingly, the big shoulders came about because of the screen limitations when making Metroid 2. They couldn't actually change the palette of the suit like they could in... Uh, like, uh, like they could in the original Metroid because it was on the Game Boy and the screens were black and white. So they added the giant shoulders to differentiate the various suit from the power suit. They kept it for Super Metroid, which is really cool. And some pirate corpses go flying. And so does Ridley. The Ridley theme in this game is an absolute banger. I'm actually kind of fond of the Omega Ridley theme from 3 as well. But... Th this one has probably stuck with me the most. And yet the pirate corpses are just sort of drifting off. Yeah, it's not necessarily part of the mission. Samus is just so determined to make sure Ridley is dead. She loses tracking, and she actually lands on Talon 4 because she wants to hunt him down. She wants him dead. Justifiably so, because he's a major space pirate commander and there is a big personal rivalry. Like, Ridley actually takes it personally that Samus Aran survived him as a child. And he's a hell of a narcissist, too. But that aside, just look at this. Just look at the introductory sequence to Talon 4, and by the gods, it is beautiful. Like, you thought it was good on the GameCube version. And this is running on the Switch. Just which gets ragged on a bit for being a bit underpowered. And yeah, maybe it is. We'll save, but oh boy, let's take a little while to listen and look as we wrap it up. Until next time, this is Red 2, returning to base.